Welcome to Global Accountancy Institute and Global Financial Engineering. I am Dr. Glenn Brown. You would have known the two names because this context is, is developed for both Global Accountancy Institute and Global Financial Engineering. And before we start, maybe I want to just explain the linkages between both. Global Financial Engineering is a company responsible to develop, design and program various algo trading proprietary system, while the Institute is, is responsible to create learning content surrounding the software and also to create strategies that can be used within any software that we have developed and yet both companies are really a proprietary trading firm this means that we use our own capital and make decision in the global financial market it also means that we don't accept clients, we don't accept customers. We make our earnings from activities within the financial market. Now the objective of this course, you're going to have many courses that fall under Global Professional Proprietary Trading Course, is to provide training for our internal traders and yes just in case we decide to grant access to these training program to the general public in the future in this session though we will develop together what I now call the global trend following trading system. And the objective of it is to provide a complete system with a complete template and indicators so that we can use this system for general market commentary. So maybe prospective person who want to get an idea or feel in this new industry, we could give them access to this course so that they can have an appreciation in the practical aspect of prop trading. So my idea is not to go into the detail of the system or even go into the configuration of the indicators that we'll be using. But for this particular course, we'll try to use indicators that are available in the normal public domain so that persons who might want to replicate person who want to construct or mimic the global trend following trading system, they will be able to do it. The, the theme of it is how global traders can trade in up or down markets. Trend following, either going up, going down, with certain momentum and we can trade both direction. So it'll be a very exciting session. I want to keep it condensed, which means that we'll just go through the important aspect. Yes, I could develop the system before 
just upload it and we talk about it. In this first lesson for the global trend following trading system, it will be a practical lesson as I want to develop the system from scratch just by discussing the features of what we might want the system to do and just possibly find um, indicators to put into the system um, to show you how we could trade the system. I want to use a pretty common um, platform, MetaTrader 4, but it can also be programmed on MetaTrader 5 as well. Okay then, so with that said, before we head over to the practical aspect where I start from a blank screen, I want to bring to your awareness certain risk warning. I'm not going to read it through like storybook to you. What I'm going to do is to put the risk warning on screen, give you a little time to go through it. It might be just three pages of risk warning. It's important for you to be aware of the risk involved. And also to know that Global Accountancy Institute or Global Financial Engineering does not guarantee that anyone who adopt the strategy will make money. That's not the objective. We are not here to grant you any form of promises. What we are going to do is to use basic fundamental concepts to design a product and allow you to go out there to understand and apply the product. And we actually recommend for you to demonstrate it for a period of say six months to get a feel of this thing. And as usual, we'll be using it for our commentary exclusively. Let me declare though, before I move to the risk warning, we also have other more advanced strategy and systems and that all features of those systems will be used in this but it will be a complete program a complete system and there's a difference between a system and a strategy with the system you are able to configure various strategy the difference uh, one of the other major difference with this is that this is a manual trading system. You will do it yourself as compared to the automated trading system that we also built. So let me start off with the general risk warning. And as you could see here, I have it as guidance. Okay. Let me just put this into yellow. I have it as guidance and risk warning. And I do this for more than one reason. Because in truth and in fact, the various websites, not just this one, the Global Accountancy Institute.com and Global Financial Engineering.com or any associate site that we might put this content on, you need to understand that it is not originating in any jurisdiction and is not intended for use in any jurisdiction that would have been contrary to local law or to the regulation of the users. Note, it is the responsibility of the client that you to ascertain whether he or she is permitted to use the service of services of Global Accountancy Institute and Global Financial Engineering based on legal requirements in his or her country of residence. Very, very important to know that. I want to now allow you to read through the additional section of the risk warning. I will allow a certain time to elapse. If in case I'm going too fast, you could pause this video since those of you who might be watching now would be watching the recorded version. So you can pause it and ensure that you digest all aspects of it. It's also critical to, to note that 
we will be using hypothetical trades. We'll be using system in terms of demo account. But even if we are using one of our live prop account, you must assume this. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. So let me allow you to digest this for now. And then we move over to the other page. Now let us move over to the other page of the risk warning. You see, in, ad in, in addition to hypothetical trading, hypothetical trade does not involve financial risk, and no hypothetical trading record can completely account for the impact of financial risk in actual trading. Let me allow you to continue to the latter part of this screen. Okay, so then the final section of our risk warning include the CFTC disclaimer warning. And it's important for you to be aware of it too. So I will give you the same time to go through this, including the US government acquired disclaimer. Okay, great. So I would have assumed then that you are now aware of the risk involved and I would have done my task in bringing to your awareness the risk involved in these types of market. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the system that we're about to develop together. The name, I said before, we want to call it we're going to call it Global Trend Following trading system. I could put some form of initial G T F T S. It's good to have some indication of such. So 
this is the name of the system that we are going to develop. And the objective of this is to demonstrate how global traders, so we consider you to be one of our global traders, our global traders can take part in up or let me call it in bullish and bearish markets and when we say markets we're not talking about just stock markets any system that we design here from Global Financial Engineering, our robot system. I mean, these are systems that are able to trade any market. And we also believe that we should set our parameters that is not optimized just for one market or, or a group of markets. This means that if you are trading the stock market, the forex market, the commodities market, whatever you are trading, our aim is to ensure that the same parameters that are used within each system is universal across all markets. So we don't want to say this is a global trend following trading system for FX or for futures, or for stocks. It is a system that is adaptable across all markets. That's our methodology. Uh, that's one of the concepts that our methodology is built on. Uh, just before I move on further, I want to also uh, say that, remember, that this is a lecture. Even though we use, at the end, we hope to have a final product from it. But It's definitely a lecture for us to go through. There are some tasks that we want to achieve. I want to put on screen for you to go through quickly and the concept of trend following. Okay, so we break and we're looking at the concept of trend following. I don't want to get, I'm not going to get too deep into it because I said for the, the objective here is to show you how we design a system together from scratch. That's based on the concept of trend following. But I just want to discuss the major element of the concept of trend following, what it does. So trend following assumes Yes, that markets at times tend to trend. Markets here mean any markets, stock markets, forex, futures, options, commodities tend to trend. That is, they move up or down for a fairly long period of time via what we call impulsive wave. And maybe I could give you a brief of impulsive wave. So here's a waveform. Up, down, up, down, up. Okay. This portion is longer than this portion. So these are what we call impulsive wave. If you look at this, generally we could say that we are going up. However, 
not all section of the waveform was uptrend because this was a downtrend and this was a down. So this we call this impulsive and this is what we call a corrective wave. Okay, so this leg is a corrective wave. But overall, we are in an uptrend. Okay, so what we call impulsive wave. The idea is this, if we can spot when the trend starts and capture much of the move, then this should increase our chance of becoming a successful trader. What are we saying here? This is where we deem the trend to start. Normally it's difficult to catch what they call bottom and top. But if we can design a methodology that enables us to get in not too far from the bottom and to get out not too far from the top, then we would have captured most of it. But there are some problems. And this is important for you to note that to be a trend follower, it requires patience, knowledge, guts, plus yes, health, and rest. I want to pause a bit on this health and rest. Because you might be wondering how health and rest come in this. Okay, so if you are a participant in this market and you don't have a solid strategy, that means that you are just guessing your way through. You're going to lose money. As human, if you are losing money, you're going to affect your health. So for example, let's say you have a $1,000 account and you enter a trade and you don't know how to cut your losses short and you are in a trade that is moving against you and you realize that you have now lost 700 out of the thousand you're not going to sleep well if that is material to your wealth and you're not going to you're going to be nervous you're going to be unhappy so that's why you say it need health and rest so you need a system that assume that you will only win 55% of the time. That's your edge. 55% of the time you're going to win. But for you to remain in the game and be successful, then it means that your reward must be greater than your risk. I will talk to you about that later on. Okay? You must be able to buy what is going up and sell what is going down. So as trend followers, we must now ask ourselves the following question. One, how will we spot the major trend? How will we know if the market is trending? Will we trade the trend and the upside or the downside? What will we do when the market goes sideways? What will our entry criteria be? How will we angle correction? Correction like here. How will we angle this? And how will we know when the trend is over? In this session, I, my aim is to satisfy all seven questions by developing the global trend following system. To spot the major trend, we are going to use or apply what we call moving averages. And there are different types of moving averages, but I'm going to use the EMA, exponential moving average. So let me set that for now. And I know some person use simple, there are many ways, okay? But for, we, we're going to use EMA. I'm not going to go through the whole logistic why. Um, I want to build a system. And the system cannot have all the different types of EMA on it. So we have to select one. So we want to select one. So the EMA, based, I want to use the EMA for the market structure. I want to use EMA and different time frame to tell us the major trend. And that EMA, I can also apply a very powerful indicator that is around, very common too, called the MACD. 
okay MACD again I'm not gonna go into the whole logistic of this um, we will do a course later on with about indicators but you don't need to know how these work now and then we'll also apply momentum indicators like the RSI and stochastic okay one reason and while sometimes we might want to avoid putting a lot of indicators on our screen the truth is this I want to rely on technical indicators to give us our decision making platform we don't want to stick about use fundamental solely to determine when we enter and exit the market we want to be precise so that every global trader will use the same scenario or condition or trigger for entry and exit and we are talking about this particular system there are other systems that use different trigger points different exit points etc um, we'll also show you how to angle correction so will we stay within the correction or will we exit at any indication of a potential correction and what is our re-entry criteria? Now I'm going to move over to the major part of it. And this is the excited part of it. Because what we want to do here is that we're going to use a blank screen and again we are using the MT4 I'm not going to go through the whole structure of MetaTrader 4 don't focus on that I'll, all these indicators that you are going to use you will find them on uh, a major trading platform but I have some that have been coded some of them maybe I just use maybe one of our proprietary or uh, two of our proprietary um, indicators that is coded and I will also make it available in the learning portal to download and guess what I'm going to do with this um, we recommend for you to try to mimic what I'm going to do to construct your own but I'm going to put the template in the learning portal as well so person can just download the template and I also put the indicator that I use in the learning portal as well so you can download them install them and make a trader for and I will do a lesson to show you how to install the indicators after this one I will recommend though that you watch this video six times if, if, you, if you are just starting out and you really want to use this as a career there is no rush I'm going to recommend just follow it you must watch this video six times okay I'm not going to just create the system today is the 29th of January 2023 I'm going to also go after creating the system and look at a few of the markets look what I think could happen tomorrow I will also look at some open position that we might have and similar uh, uh, instruments Maybe show you why we enter them, how you could enter them too, and most importantly, we're going to look at the risk management module. Okay. Now, for those of you who have gone through the 825 strategy, I have also gone through the global uh, complete moving average system. While you might find similar indicators as a guide every 
trade should have a name. Every system should have a name. The parameters, the default parameters that we use on each system can be different. So in this session, I'm going to use different parameters if necessary. Now, since we have now set the framework, I'm going to go over to my blank screen. So I'm going to use my screen sharing feature of this lecture room. And here I have MetaTrader 4 platform. And as a matter of fact, um, to ensure that everything is uniform, maybe I should use this account going forward for daily commentary using the global trend following trading system and what I will do then is to maybe set it up so that we trade in the direction of the short term medium and long term when I finish it and I will just designate what we call short term, medium and long term. Since the market is open for cryptocurrency, maybe I should use the most popular crypto, which is Bitcoin, as the basis to create the system. So here is Bitcoin on my left. All I need to do is just to double click on it. Oops, no. I just need to click on it and select chart window. Okay, so I select chart window. It open up in the middle, but I want to bold it to cover these gray here. So I bold it. Okay, so here's the blank screen. The default is the one hour. Now, what I'm going to do here before we move, maybe it's good to take notes because I'm going to write into the section. We are going to design right now as we speak. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine strategies within one system. Nine strategies within one system. So the name of the system will be the Global Trend Following Trading System. But I'm going to design nine strategies within the system that is based on time frames. That means they are time frames related. I want to possibly take away a little bit of the laws of multiple time frames. We state that every time frame has its own structure. So the monthly time frame, which is a pretty much the longest time frame, have its own structure. The weekly time frame have its own structure. The daily time frame have its own structure. The four hour time frame have its own structure. The one hour have its own structure. The 30 minutes have its own structure. The 15 minutes have its own structure. The five minutes have its own structure. And the one minute have its own structure. And the fact that I have the own structure, I can design system independently within the sector that also have its own risk management module. Okay. So before we get into that though, let me go ahead and start to look at some of the features that I want. Here, what you have, these are candlestick. I can bowl it a bit so you'll see them. Um, we have options, we have candlestick, we have bar charts. So what you see here are bar charts. Some bar charts have various colors. You can change these. 
if I want to go to candlestick, I click here and I go candlestick. You'll notice though that it have white in the middle and green on the outline. Some other chart will have red and green or red and blue. Red when the market is going down and blue when it's going up or green when it's going up. We could also have the line chart that sometimes we use just especially if we are using the um, the software. But in this particular one, I want to keep I would, we would be able to move from all, but I want to keep it to the bar chart. But I want some colors. Also, when I look in my on my screen, I'm seeing some grid lines. I don't want them there. I want a clear blank page. Also, maybe I feel that this price is a little bit too close to the edge. So I want to come up here and use shift. Push it out a little bit more so I can see what's happening. Okay, now I want to get out these. How do we get these out? I want to right click, go right down to properties. And here I can make that adjustment. So, up bar is deemed as a bullish bar. We expect, I mean, when you say up bar, we would say that there's a high probability that price will continue to move higher. Down bar, high probability price will continue to move lower. But I want it to be red instead of green. So I want to select red here. I could do blue too, but let me just use um, red and green. The bull candle, bull mean anticipation of an upward move. I want this to be green as well. Lime green, I want to use there. And the bear candle, again, I probably let the market will go down, decline. I want to use red for that. Okay. The line graph, um, let us stay on the green. All these can stay, stop loss level and um, arcs level, okay? Um, yeah, yeah, I can leave these, okay? What happened that when I select that, you'd have seen that these now have for down, red, up for green. You'll also notice though that the grid line is still there. So let me go back to properties. You would not see the option here to change the grid line. You're going to find over here, common. Here, you'll see what and what you want to show. I'm going to take out the grid line. I could ask for volume, but I might not want volume here now. So I'm going to go and select OK. And here you have a nice blank screen in front of you. Now, if I move from bar chart to candlestick, you see we have a nice solid green candle, bullish candle here, bearish candle, okay? If I go to the bar, to, 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 to the line, it should just be like this. So I'm going to leave it on any one. You can change it. Yeah? I mean, it's not a problem. We can leave it like this if you want to see the emotion of this thing now, or we can leave it at the bar chart. Okay, so maybe the most common one is the candlestick. Let me leave it at the candlestick. Okay, I'm also on the one hour. I could put this on the one minute. And this being each, every minute, one of these candles will change. Okay, that's what it means. Every minute, one of the candles change. Five minutes, every five minutes, one of the candles change. Fifteen minutes, every fifteen minutes, one of it change. 30 minutes, every 30 minutes, one of the candles change. One hour, every hour, one of the candles change. Four hour, every four, one of the candles change. I will also pause here to say that you should use this as your pivot window. That means this is where you're going to rest in order to make most of your decision. I will also recommend to use this as your major trading screen. It's like for swing trading, not too fast, not too slow, midway between day and position traders the daily you see as well weekly and the monthly i'm going to go back to my four hour okay so remember here now that i want to achieve a few things okay um i want to identify market sector when the market is trending i want to use moving average to do that and i'm going to use the exponential moving averages i'm going to select 
between 1 to 200. The truth and in fact, there's no holy grail here. Any one you want to use, well and truly, you can use it. But instead of me having 1 and 2, one of the concept, the foundation of the concept is that we are going to use a set of moving averages and when each suck on each other, then that determines a bullish market or a bearish market. I'm going to select the EMAs based on certain objective that I want to meet. And in this trading, we're going to use all the EMAs. So I want to start off with my 8 EMA. How to find it? I have two options. I could go here under the navigator, okay, window, and go to indicator R. I could just go right here for some of them. So let me go here. Moving average, I'm going to start with, if you look period, I'm going to start with period 8. I'm not going to shift anything. I'm going to use exponential, apply to the close. But the first one, I'm going to put this in yellow. So that's the 8, is in yellow. Okay? And then I will put it here. If you look what happened, just using the 8 alone. When price close above the 8 and rise above that candle of the close, we tend to rally further. For example, look at this candle. This candle close above the 8. Then when the high of it is taken out, bam, we shoot off. See that? If we go back to the left, this candle close above. The high come across here, shoot off. In a bullish market, strong bullish market, price normally stay above the 8 EMA. It does normally close below it. It can pierce it, but it normally close below it in a bullish market. But while a lot of person can use one line, one moving average, I don't want that. I want to use a series that gives me what I call my market structure. So I'm going to use the moving average to design a market structure. So I have, I'm at the 8. I'm going to now also use 25. So I'm going to go to 25. And you can use different color. Yes, you can customize different color. Here, I'm going to go with the aqua for the 25. And I just put that on. And now you'll see the 825. You'll also see a relationship with the 8 and the 25. I want to talk about that relationship. Yes, we're going to recommend for a person to go and get a cup of coffee and so because this is going to take some time. We're not going to rush it. It's being recorded. And when we record this session, then even 15, 20 years is still valid. Nothing needs to change, okay? Okay, so let's... So, yeah, I'm having a drink too. So, you might hear some little mumbling here and there. So, forgive me for that. So the 825, there's a relationship with the 825. As long as the 8 is above the 25, we consider the market to be bullish. Or we say that there's a high probability that, mark, that the price will continue to rally. As the distance between the 825 widen, then the market gets more stronger. But there comes a time when it might extend too far and pull back like this. But if you look, while this candle pulled back below the 8 and the 25, we did not have a cross with the 825. And that's why there's a strategy that I designed called the 825 trading strategy, where we just use two moving averages and made trade decisions from that. But the global trend following trading system will use more moving averages sucking together. We could consider these to be pretty much micro trend moving average, pretty short term, okay? Okay, so after the 25, I'm going to go with the 50. Um, so I'm going to put 24. Let's change this to 50. Again, you can use any color. I'm going to just use the magenta for this. And you see what happened here? Let's look at the rate. Let's look what is happening. The relationship between. So when price is above all three, it's bullish. If you look here, we could use the 50 as a trailing stop loss line. I must admit now that this happened only if um, it's best to do it in a bullish market. 
So later on, when we go through our risk management system, you'll know I you we are going to use one universal default hard stop. We are not saying that that is where it will be, but that we want to start from. Then, as market continues, we decide how to do the adjustment. But I'm not going to go through any adjustment technique here first. I'm going to give you just the default. Okay, so this is the 50. The next one I want to use is I want to apply the 89. Okay, and I'm going to just use uh, a lime green for the 89. And bam, if you look what happened, the 8 is on top of the 25, 25 on top of the 50, and 50 on top of the 89. This is a orderly. Okay, so the moving averages here are orderly. We see they suck into each other like this. And when we have it moving from left to right, up, so it move from the bottom left to the upper right, we are in an uptrend. If it moves, come let's see. If it moves from the bottom left to the upper right, we are in an uptrend. If it moves from the top left, top left. So this is bottom left, top left. If it moves from the top left to the lower right, we are in a downtrend. But if it moves from the lower left to the upper right, we are in an uptrend. That's what is happening here. This is 89. Now, um, so some person will tend to use 100, uh, but I want to use 140. So I use 89 for more than one reason. The next one is going to be 140. So for the 140, I will just use blue for that. You see what happened? It's far below it again. The final one, which is really a long-term moving average, pretty much common, is the 200. I will put that in red, and bam. Now what do I have here? These are the only moving averages line we need on the global trend following trading system. The only moving average line we need. I want to talk to you a bit about this. Normally, short-term day traders, scalpers, will rest between the 8 and the 25. So most of the action that you are seeing here involve everybody, short-term, high-frequency traders, okay? If you look on the 50, which is this, you notice that in an uptrend, at no point in time, price come close to the 50. So there's an uptrend. So we could use these for long term, medium, short. But all we want is the arrangement of the moving average. If the 8 is on top of the 25, 25 on top of the 50, 50 on top of the 89, 89 on top of the 140, 140 on top of the 200, we are in an uptrend. Also, a guide I'm going to tell you here about trend change. We can note when a trend change occurs. The final signal for a trend change is when the 140 cross above the 200. See what it, look, look what's happening here. See, it's 140 cross above the 200, bam. This, so make a note of this. It is a method that you can use to identify potential trend change. And when we say trend change, it doesn't mean that we are sure. Everything is based on probability. So there's a high probability that the trend have changed when the 140 cross above the 200. So now we have the market structure. This is a bullish market structure as we have it here now. Okay. I don't want to change to any other... Um, instrument yet because I want to finish and save it now that we identify the market structure it will tell you when the market is bullish like this case and the flip of this will also tell you when it is bearish all of these indicators though if you look they are in the chart they are on the chart window now I want to put in some additional indicators so we could have a market that is trending like say here but it's really, it's in, a, it's in a bullish market structure. It falls within an uptrend, 
but it is not really moving it is consolidating this is what we would have called a uh, sideway market and we might need to have an indicator that will identify sideway markets we also need to have an indicator yes that could give us an idea when the market is bullish or bearish. A powerful indicator is the mat day. I'm gonna put on the normal mat day first. You're gonna go in the window. To do that, we're gonna to go to navigator bar and maybe I'm going to just see if I could take this out. Okay, so I take this out. I wanna go up to indicator and I wanna pick up mat day and possibly let's use this one i call new mat day. let's see if i will get what i want okay yeah before i do that let me just make sure i get what i okay so i'm getting what i want here okay okay so here the deal and yes you might see different mat d indicator um i could show you two just in case what you are looking at is different from mine. It's technically the same thing. Okay. Um, so I can pick up this MACD too. If you look, the difference though is that it only have one line. Okay. So I will use the one that have the crossover. I want to change the parameters. But that's the one that I want to use. You also have others, so you could find them. There are a lot of them all over, okay? You could also have this one if you look, it's the same, okay? You have somewhere the histogram change, so I could, I could use this one. And you'd have noticed that the histogram change at times. And this we have a special setting here, but just for... Uh, our purpose here we don't need to use it but if we want to use it, I can use it and I can go inside here and I'm able to get out of this the setting that I want let me show you what I mean here the setting determine the various lines this is a custom indicator that removes some of the feature but i could use one that have the features that give me the option to change the setting see with me okay so i could tell me give me the signal on any i don't want any email i could leave these okay now let's go down to the ema here I want the, the for this strategy I'm gonna use the 26 EMA, I'm gonna use the 52, I'm gonna use nine. Later on I will come and tell you why I choose those numbers, okay? For this I'm gonna use white as the uh, background since I'm on a black screen already. And when I do this, I already have the color. Let me just put this as white, just in case. I have nothing to miss on that. Okay. So if you look what happened now, now, you would have seen the colors appearing. Okay. You've seen both lines. You've seen the bar. And you have seen this. Now, in truth and in fact, I don't need to see any red or green bars. But I'll show you the various options you have out there. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take this out. I want to take this out. I'm going to stick to this. But I might do some adjustment. Okay. So I will go into the setting. Here. I'm going to use 52, 26, 9. No. 26 first. Look at it. Fast is the shortest one. 52.9. Look at the 
arrangement. Some might come the slow first, whatever it is. Just look at that. Um, let me change it and you'll see what happens. Now, I might want a zero level for this to show when it cross above zero. So I'm going to go, I want to change the color too. Uh, maybe I want to use red and green for the line color and maybe for this one I might just want to use gray okay just for ease of and I don't want this to be a dotted I want to be a normal line and I want it to show me the zero line and I might use white for the color for that and maybe what I'll do is to take the dotted line right here and I select that. Now I might need to change this red dotted. So I go back to input, color, this. I will change it to the two as I want it. And oops, didn't change. Come again, let's check this. Zero. Okay. Okay, good. So I would have seen then. Let's reason from here. That from the lower left, these little histogram bars, and maybe I want to just increase the size of them. So let me give myself uh, one for this. Okay. Now it's increased more. Maybe we could get a little one. I possibly try it with two. I don't think I want to go over two though. Okay, good. Yes, at least it's good. So you'd have seen that here. The histogram, let's put, put an histogram, it crossed below the zero line. But when it crosses below the zero line, you'll have seen that the moving average at the top also cross. But this is coming down. Look at the top. It's coming down. But we would not, if you take the short based on this indicator, let's say you short the instrument, that means you sell and short, sometimes confusing. Short means you expect the price to go down, so you short it. Some people call it sell, but to avoid the confusion where you sell it when you exit a position, let's call it buy. Okay, that means you go long or you go short. Okay, so you could go short here based on this indicator. But if you do that, you'd have realized that you'd have to be very slick and quick to get out before it reverses on us. Why? It was a bullish market. So this was not really a bearish move, it was just a pullback. Do you really want to trade a pullback? No. So I would not have taken this because I already have this that give me the market structure. I want to take down this a bit um, so it look a little uniform. Yeah, okay. So look, see it look neat here now? You can still see between it. So that's the MACD. Then I'm going to add, I might want an indicator that give me an idea whether the market is going sideways or it is bullish and that I could use is what I call the ADX average directional movement index and I'm going to put a level 20 which indicates that when the market is when the ADX is below 20 I want to use 14 period okay I'm going to use uh, maybe I use gold for the ADX line I'm using green and for the positive DMI and red for the negative. So normally when the positive DMI cross above the negative is bullish move, okay? I'm using 20 as the trigger. I'm using a white dotted for the level. And bam, I put that on. It's okay. So this is the ADX line. And this is the positive D1, negative D1. If the ADX line is rising and above 20, it is trending. However, if it is falling, it indicates that the bulls are losing some of their strength. If it falls below, just look at the goal line now we're talking about. If the goal line falls below zero line, it means it is no longer trending, it is consolidating. So look when it crossed below here, look what happened here. It was going sideways. Okay? The green and the red line could be used as trigger. But we'll go into that later. Alright, so I'm going to put down all these indicators and then I fix it up neatly in terms of the width of it. So um, don't worry too much as we go through them. Okay, apart from the ADX, 
I might sometimes want to know if something is overbought or oversold. If I'm in an uptrend, I normally want to enter when you have a pullback, but the pullback also have a reversal of the stochastic indicator. So I'm going to look for the slow stochastic and add it to it. Let's see if I can find it anywhere here. Oscillator, stochastic, okay. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same setting at the mat day, okay. 26, I want to use 9 here, okay. I'll keep it at the same pitch, okay, to keep it same. Then I'm going to use levels 25 and 75, okay, and put bum. Okay, so let's see what is happening here. Okay. I'm going to now use another one with the momentum RSI 14. Which is relative strength index. And yeah, I'm going to use 14. Take that as my default. I have different levels with it. But the key level is 50. So maybe I could take out some of these out here. So let me delete that. Delete that. Um, I want to delete that. Delete that, delete that. Okay, so I want to use 50. I want to use 25 and I want to use 75. I will still stick to my levels as being white with dotted. Okay. And I go palm. Okay, so this looks more reasonable. If you look at this, when when the RSI is above 50, considered to be bullish. When it is below 50, it's considered to be bearish. When it's above 75, it means that we have hit what I call an overbought area. So look at this. High above 75, look here. So if we are here, we could be very careful with this, either to tighten our stop or watch price action along these areas. Okay, so the next one I want to put on for you is my ATR indicator. Average true range. The average true range give me a measure of validity. And I'm going to use it as well to calculate my stop loss and my target. I want to use level, I want to use period 20. And um, I don't have to put any level in this. All I need is just the period. And you would have seen it like this. Or I could decide to use green if I want for the indicator itself. So let me go ahead and use green since we have adapted that color. All right, so I'm gonna fix this up a bit. It's gonna come down here just to fix up the window. So I, I sat them neatly down here. I'm gonna carry down this as well. And the reason for this to stay here is because of the level and the and the period that I'm using. Normally, um, the period would have been like eight three three. As a fact, let me do this. Let me use let me use um, fourteen. I'm gonna use fourteen three three just for default, and then I'm gonna show you later on how you can change. Okay, and I wanna use I want a fifty. Let me go to the level. I want a 50. I want uh, I want dotted white as usual for the levels. So 50, 75, 25. 
Um, here I might just go stick to the original green and the red and bam okay so this is our sarcastic let's keep it at the 14 and the RSI at the 14 um, maybe I might go with my lime green here this is a lime green okay um, and this the same okay so let me fix these up nicely just to give us some even windows you have seen we come in on nicely all right so this look pretty much okay for our purpose here now okay so what I would have done then I would have given you all the indicators that we need to use for Chigo just before we move here a buy would have occurred when one the mat day is bullish that means above the zero level the ADX line above 20, the trigger, and the positive DMI is over the negative DMI. The stochastic reading above 50, and the RSI above 50. Now, at any point in time, and any one of the time frame, when we execute a trade, I'm gonna use a setting for my trailing. I'm going to use 12 times the ATR reading for my stop loss, but it's going to be a trailing stop loss. And my target is normally three times my risk. So my risk is 12 and my target will be 36. So my risk is 12 maximum on any time frame. And my target is 36 ATR. I want to reason a bit with you. I use 20. If you look in the other system, I use 14. Now, in this system, I use 20. That major difference, but this is what has happened. When I use 20 bars, it means that one bar have 1 upon 20 times 100, 5% influence on it. If I use 40, it will be more than 5%. So I want to just, I don't want one bar to have so much effect on it. So I want to smooth it out a little bit. So I use 20. Initially, when I enter, my trailing stop is 12 times 20. As the market move in my favor, it will also move up, but never down. As the ATR condense and consolidate and move lower, it will also adjust by 12 times it. We expect the market to take us out of the trade. We don't want to get out of the trade on our own. We want the market to take us out. So for example then, I want to show you something here. If you enter a trade, like say we enter here, this is what would have happened. As we go through, you'll see more, okay? My stop, which would have been my trailing stop, Okay, will be, let me get this calculator, will be 12 times whatever the reading here is. So this is 258.7985. This is my trailing stop, 3105.58. Currently price is at 23,560, call it that. Okay, so if I minus 23,560, let's find the difference. It would be at 2454. So my stop would be at 2454. If you look, we really enter this trade and this stop loss is technically right there. See this? This red line is stop loss. Because system five or uh, six, it will be system six. Enter this trade on the Bitcoin, and this is the current trailing stop. I want to show you why you must always, this is a trend following system. Let's work the stats, please. Here are the stats for trend following. A lot of 
trading legends of the past, their hit ratio was about 55 to 1, which means that 45% of their trades were losing trades. Listen to the, the reason. But the winning trades were multiple of the losing trades. So overall, the magnitude of their gains is more than the magnitude of their losses. And that's what makes you a successful trader. I want to go back in time because right to the lower left here, you would have got a trigger on this to go along on the Bitcoin from here. Your stop loss would still be 12 times what the current ATR is. So in truth and in fact, if we have entered here, then our stop would now be here. So we'd have been locking up these profit and moving higher. If you enter here, and as you see a little, little wiggle to pull back, you get out. So you get in, get out, get in, get out. You are working too hard. We don't work hard, we work smart. There's a difference between hard worker and smart worker. So what we do? We allow the wisdom of trading to work. Let your profit run and cut your losses short. Our cutting of losses short is always 12 times the ATR. But for this, we allow it to run. Now, yes, I enter on the top here. So I assume that we did in a position. But let's give you an idea how that is done. All right. Now, I would have completed most of the lower window indicator for the global trend following trading system. I want to talk to you a bit. The MACD is a critical indicator for us. If I'm on the I'm on one, two, three, four, five, six. So system six. If I go to the daily, it's the same strategy. Look what happened. The MACD difference. You see the MACD yes, above the zero line. I could go to the weekly too, and I would see the same thing. See that? Okay. And I could go to the monthly. Now, if you look at Bitcoin and the monthly, let's reason. We are coming from 69,000 plus. Psst, dangerous crash. But let's analyze what happened here. It pulled back into the 89, not the 50. Let me go again. In the dangerous moment of Bitcoin when everybody is buying at 60. 9,000, uh, 68,000, 911 says going to uh, maybe a million. We were tapping out. It crashed. Look at this. The 8 couldn't hold it. Bam. The 25 all and bounce. Start at the 8 again coming down. Break through the 25. Blast through, blast through the, the 50. And come and all at the 89. We breach the 89, bounce with an inside bar. See, it's an inside bar. Rise above the inside bar. So we are saying that we find support at the 89 monthly. Okay? The 89 EMA monthly. This was the support. Then we bl this bar close above the last three candles. One. One, two, three, boom. This is a breakout. This is the monthly. Now, the good thing is that we don't know yet because this is still running. But if we close above the eight and maintain there, we could look to see if we break above 24,358. Break above that, the next stop is 28,061. These are the same lines we move for us, we use for support and resistance. So I'm saying right now, my next resistance is 24,329. They are followed by yeah twenty eight thousand and sixty one. If we break above that, then we look clear sky ahead, clear sky ahead up to the next sixty nine thousand. But we are very, very, very careful. Reason being, look at the mat day. Look at the mat day. See that is negative coming down. It's below the zero line and the monthly. But we could have some 
sadly true to say this could be a bounce that remain as we have uh, coming together the positive DMI seems to trying to close above the negative DMI. It hasn't happened yet when it happened then that's fine. We also see another warning because the RSI is below 50 so it's still bearish on the monthly but we saw post slowing possible coming on to here. And we could also see that the stochastic is also below 50. So why this is bearish? But that monthly is a good place to be, to look at the macro picture. Look and see what the big hedge funds, the big banks are looking at. What are they doing? They are not interested in those little 10,000, 20,000, okay? They are trading billions of dollars. Let's go a little bit closer to you and look at the weekly. Now listen, if the weekly is above the 25 that's the aqua line here we consider it to be an uptrend so listen so the guide is this if the weekly is above 25 we consider it to be an uptrend you see what happened here so when you go consolidation on the weekly look what happened on the adx is above 27 we could see the stochastic also above 50, the RSI above 50. So this is a bullish move on the weekly. In truth and in fact, though, the moving average were not orderly. So normally, I would not take this trade here. But if this is on the weekly, maybe I could get a trade, yes, two level below the weekly, which would be on the four hour. And that is the reason why, bam, you realize that this become bullish. So when you see a move above the 25 EMA, to get the bullish market structure on the adjacent time frame so that you don't breach the rule, then just go two time frame below and analyze it and you'll see that that's what happened. Now, so I'm here and we're in that trade. So let's put on some more whistle on this thing. If you look here though, I have to move that powerful indicator, the, the MACD that we rely on. I have to move from screen to screen. I indicate to you that I want to use the four hour as my pivot. You know, like my where I sit to view all markets. And therefore, I want to create what I call a screen at a glance. I want to see what is happening here. So I want to add one of my proprietary indicator called the Pats Mat Day that, that 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 I program. I want to, yeah, I'm gonna put it as a proprietary indicator, but I'm gonna put it a Pats Mat Day. Now, what the Pats Mat Day would have done, I'm gonna put this as my 26, 52. What it will do, it will give me a reading right across the time frame. Look what happened, and it I'm gonna put it at the bottom of this. Oh, this is powerful. This gives me now a bird's eye view of the various time frame and what they are doing. See that? Look what happened here now. Remember when we went over to the monthly a while ago? We said the monthly was negative. See it here, we have it here. The weekly was positive, we have it here. The daily was positive, we have it here. See that? We could see the four hour where we are. It's about, it is positive. Okay, we have it here. So this gives me now a good idea of what is happening across all the time frame. And I could denote this as the daily as short term, the weekly as medium, and the monthly as long term. Here is what we call micro trends. Okay, so these going down is micro trends. So I give you what I call a multiple time frame indicator for my mat day that I call my Pats mat day. Okay, and um, let's continue. To make life a little bit more easy for you as well. Sometimes I have to look very close to the price to see 23,628. 
And what if I could have a signal here that give me some additional statistic reading, but give me a bigger print. For example, what's the spread at this moment? What is the status in terms of the net move for the day? And there's an indicator, which is a public, um, it's available in the public domain name called signal bar. I'm gonna use it. And here I'm gonna put it on my upper right hand side. Inside the signal bar, I'm gonna configure the setting for the indicator that we have. So I'm gonna do the fast, matinee, 26, 52, nine. For the RSI, I'm gonna go 14. For the CCI, I'm gonna go 14, come as the channel index that is. For the stochastic, I'm gonna still go 14, three, three, okay? And then for the fast moving average and slow crossover, I'm gonna use 825. If you look, when we go to the weekly and we see the market cr cross above the eight, um, when the 825 cross in any time frame, it always give us an idea that there's a, a good, I mean, a huge um, probability that price will move higher. So I want to be able to look across that signal bar and see what's the bias in the moment. A little more, I'll show you how we read this thing. So I'm gonna put that up and bam, look what happened. On the upper right hand side here, you'll see it daily, you see solid green come across. It means that this instrument now, the Bitcoin, is bullish. But instead of peeping to see what is happening here, see, I see bright, the big print, 23,650.42. I could see the spread, I could see the pip to open, I could see the daily average. But this is important along with here. I can give, I can have an idea. So if I want to see what is my bias in the moment, well, a day, night, whatever it is, all I need to do is to go to the daily here. If I see two green and one red, it means two out of three. So I'm 66% bullish. If I see two red and one green, I'm 66% bearish. So I could take that 66% um, move because maybe I could get some pips from it, uh, some movement from it. Okay, great. So now I put on an indicator that help you. There's also another one that I like to give me an idea of where the position is, where the line is. And what I call a, um, a EJ candle time. So I'm going to go for another um, prop indicator called EJ candle time. I'm going to add this to the learning portal window. So EJ candle time. And when just add it. And you'll see it give me the time remaining for the candle to close. Okay. Don't want to talk. Yes, let's talk a bit. Earlier on, we we talk about the eight twenty five cross. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put two indicator. Right here, if you look, I, I indicate to you that you can know when the market trend will re reverse by comparing the 140 and the 200. I don't want to cloud the screen too much with this uh, crossover. So what I want to do here is I want to put on a two-period crossover signal indicator. What do I mean by this? I want to put that when the 8 and the 25 cross, I must get an up arrow. So I'm going to put 8. I'm going to go 25. I'm going to use maybe a arrow type. I could use a round. So we use 3. So I'm going to put 3 here. I could use that stuff. I could use finger. I'm going to put 3. Um, and I'm going to also use the... The color for it. So because the 8 is yellow and the 25 is aqua, I'm going to use it. So I'm going to use 8. I'm going to 
gonna use the echo. It's gonna give, I want to stick to the three width, okay? So I'm gonna go bam, and it's gonna give me an alert as well when it cross. I could see that. And later on, I will show you. So I put that on. I also want the 140, 200. I'm gonna use blue and red. So I'm gonna put blue here. I'm gonna put red here. I'm gonna go to the input and put 140. I'm gonna put 200. I'm gonna use the same arrow, same um, type of arrow type, round and bum. If you look what happened here, you'll see an up arrow. So instead of you have to look and peep when the 140 cross above the, two, the 200, it appears here. So right here is the up arrow and this bar, so this has been the trigger. Now, for those of you taking manual trade, this is what you do. You will um, put it, say, uh, the spread amount. So if the spread is, say, five pip, you put go five pip above the high of this bar. If I put my candle on this bar, if I look to the lower um, left-hand side, I want to see the reading. Look, let's look down there. You see the high was 19071. So I could set it here as my entry. So instead of going market order, I set it a trigger above that. And boom, this candle will take me in. And I'm gone up, 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 up. Okay, so that's a crossover that I put in. I could have had a crossover. I really don't need any more for this system, to be honest. So I will leave that out. Okay, now let's talk some more. I mentioned to you that and this um, instrument is pretty huge, so the pip value is pretty great. But I want to show you um, another indicator I want to put on to talk. The MACD is a very important indicator for us. And therefore, I want to see when the MACD cross over. So I want to put on an alert called the MACD cross. You see, I want my system to have a lot of stuff on it, to be honest, because I want it to give me the information. Now, with my system, I don't need to watch news. I don't need to read newspaper. I don't need to listen to economic um, data because I'm following the trend and I believe in the efficient market hypothesis to some degree. So whatever is out there is already reflected in my chart and whatever is not yet, whatever is out there not reflected in my chart will soon be reflected in my chart, okay? So here I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go with the same um, cross um, Maybe use, uh, okay, could possibly use a different, um, I still, I stick to that. Bam, get a little circle. So you see here, when the mat D cross down, I get a little red dot above this with an alert. When it cross up, I get it here. See that, see what does that mean here? See, it crossed up a while ago. See this little up sign here now? It's up. So I have a mat D alert on the system and that will mirror with the, indicate the cross down there. Um, another one which I want um, is the ADX. I want to see when the positive DMI cross the negative DMI. So I'm going to go to and put on my ADX cross. And what happened is this. When I do that, it will definitely help me to get a good feel of what is happening. So it's 14. I'm not going to trouble these as well. So bam. Now, reason with me now. So you need to know the difference. The big circle is the EMA cross. The dot is the MACD cross. The up and down arrow is the ADX cross. As you see, when we have it here, see, okay, so we can use these to pyramid into the trade so that the ADX cross. You could see the ADX here. Look right here, see? Right here, when we have the red cross over and then the green cross over right here. Bam. In truth and in fact, I would not have taken any cell based on the ADX cross. 
I will acknowledge it as a pullback. But I could enter and each cross up, bullish cross. So the blue is a bullish cross here. I could enter here, bam. I could enter here again, bam. Another opportunity here. Another one here. Another one here. Another one here. Okay? All right. So I would have given you a lot of stuff here. Yeah. A lot of stuff. Um, wow. It's worth massive amount of money. Now, in the previous um, lecture with the 825 um, strategy, I give you a feature of a stop plan that you could use, which is the factor below the 25 EMA. So let me add the factor by, by Bill Williams, and I'm going to use it. Um, I'm not going to put a big um, factor on this. I'm going to just use it as a oh, yeah, small one. I want to use gray for that. Just a little tip. Now, the factor indicates turning points. So, for example, if I enter here and I want to take a risky trade, so to speak, because I realized that I was in the top, okay? I would take the factor as a stop below the EMA 25. So, this, the factor below the EMA 25 would be a stop. So, this is my stop here. When I enter on this move, I put my stop here. I could continue to trail my stop. Every stop that occurs below the EMA 25, tip of the factor. See there? Tip of the factor. Tip of the factor. I wouldn't take it down because I can't move my stop down, so I leave it right here and bam, this might take me out. I'll wait again, I could enter here, still brave enough, put my stop here. And I rally up, 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 up. So the factor is another indicator that you can use on your screen as a risk management tool. Okay, the factor can also show support and resistance. So, for example, right here, you will have seen numerous fact top up factors. It indicates that this level could be a resistance zone. So, for example, then, I could come and say, okay, right here at the top here is a resistance. That means when price break above this, I could take a breakout trade. So, if you look right below each, this become a resistance point. And if you look, and this bar is a bar that break above the, the resistance. So you could take this breakout trade and put the stop below the factor of the 25 again. And if you see we break out. Support could be the same. At this moment, the support would have been right here. Bam. That means we don't expect price to go down here if the characteristic is, is truthful based on this bullish move. Okay. So that shows you that you can use the factor for support and resistance. However, I sometimes don't want to draw this stuff. So I want to put in another indicator um, that gives me some idea of a middle ground called a pivot point. And then from the pivot point, I'll be able to see three resistance level and three support level. So I'm going to put in, and then I also want to uh, mirror some level of Fibonacci because a lot of traders use it. And I want to see, I want to spy on them. That's the idea here when I configure some of these settings. I want to spy on them. I want to see what they are doing. So I want to set up my indicator and bam, look what I'm here. It gives me support and resistance immediately. I'm going to drill down a bit to uh, strategy five so you could see a broader picture of the support and resistance. Look at this. The market structure is still bullish, but you could see here that this is a resistance. This is resistance three, resistance two, resistance one. The pivot is like a mega ground. If price move above the pivot, we consider that to be bullish. If it move below the pivot, we consider that to be bearish. Below the pivot level, you'll see support one, two, and three. The objective here is not to get through the defense, not to show you the real strategy for support resistance, but just to give you the tool, and later on, we'll be able to create various strategies, additional strategies, apart from the default uh, within the system. Okay, so I give you an automatic support and resistance line. Okay, now some of you who might not be able to calculate the stop loss as I indicated to you. I could give you a multiple of the ATR with an indicator. 
um, it helps sometimes, especially if we want to add what I call normal trailing, which I will show you later. So there's an indicator called ATR in pips. We are using 20 period, but I indicated you earlier that the multiply is 12. Everywhere we go, then the stop loss is 12 times the current ATR. If you look, you'll see print here. See, 12 times current ATR. This is very important for me. You might not see it here on Bitcoin, since Bitcoin is very huge, but maybe I could do this. Let me do this. Let me go to a peer like uh, a currency. Okay, we soon come back to, to Bitcoin here. I'm, I'm gonna go to a currency peer. I'm gonna go Euro USD. I'm, I'm gonna show you what is happening here. So I just need to drag the peer on the chart. You have noticed that 12 times, which would have been the stop loss, is 192 pips. I could take this and plug into the trailing stop. Or uh, if I have a, 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 a order in, then I could say trail by 192 points. As a matter of fact, let me, let me show you, because we had an order in here. Let me show you how you could do that, okay? So let me find it. And let's say we're gonna use this account. This is a pretty much of a huge account, six million plus. So let me find the Euro USD 240 and show you how you could add that trailing by using the pip calculation that you get. So here is the here is the trade. You'd have seen that it's a buy trade. Position size is 1.5 lat. You see where we enter, okay? And you see the system is executed. What you need to do, just go like this, right click in it, and go trailing, go customize. So let me go again. You find the pair or whatever instrument you want, right click in it, go trailing, go custom. Now, this is a five digit broker, so 192 pips will be 1920 points. So it's points with you, so you're going to be 192. If you leave it as 192 alone, it's going to be 19 pips. It's really 192 points. So since it's points here, okay, not pips point. This, if I put this on here, it will give me, it will automatically move to break even and trade by 192 points when it reached there. See that? It will be colored like this. If you want to remove it, you can just go back trailing and put none. Bam, and it's gone, okay? So that was uh, something I wanted to show you with that, or you could utilize this, okay? All right, so we would have covered that. Um, let me look and see if we'd have reached this table, I feel comfortable that, look, you have a beautiful system here. So we can now move from different strategy. Remember, this is strategy one, and the one minute, same issue for buy. You want to see the moving average supposed to be orderly and sacked together. For up, you'd have seen the yellow above the aqua, the aqua above the magenta, magenta above green, green above blue, and blue above red. This would have indicated a bullish sector. You also look for the MACD to be positive, and you can now look on your one minute MACD here, and you'll have seen it. The ADX supposed to be above 20, the stochastic above 50. RSA above 50, and that's it. You trigger. For a reversal, you'll do the same. Now, you could also use this indicator as a trend determination. Trend determinator. It determines the trend that you want to trade in. I recommend for you to trade in the direction of the short term. The daily is the short term. So if the MACD daily here, you don't need to train the window, say buy. I mean, when you go to the screen, you know you will not take a sell. You will only buy. If you go to strategy two, it will be the same. Our bias is bullish. We will take only buy signal. So for here, like when we have, this is a sell. Look at this one. This is a bearish sector. We have red on the top, followed by blue, followed by green, magenta, aqua, and yellow. This is a bearish market sector. But yes, we could take this as a short sell if we are operating independent of 
the higher time frame. We don't want to do that. So, in that sense then, we look on the daily. What the daily is saying here is bullish. So we'd have ignored this shot and wait for a uptrend. You could also take this D1 and determine your bias. We are 100% bullish here. Green stands for bullish. Expect price to go up. If it was red, it would be 100% bearish. Let me see maybe if I could find another one to show you what I mean here. Okay, so look on the US CAD. This is a bearish market. See that? Red followed by blue, green, magenta, aqua, yellow. But what is our bias? Our bias, look on the daily, is 100% bearish, so we could take this trade. I could also see it here too. Show you, just give an idea. Now, our trailing stop would have been 38 pips based on the fact that we are under five minutes. But remember now, our stop loss is also 12 times. So any time frame you're on, okay, let me go to a 15 minutes. Our stop is now 83 pips. If I go to the 30 minutes, our stop is 168 pips. If I go to the one hour, our stop is 182 pips. If I go to the four hour, our stop is 414 pips. The daily, our stop is 1,250 pips. You see what is happening here? Every time frame has its own structure, hence it will have its own management system. Again, let me go back to my four hour as the basis. Now, let's say before, what if you are on the four hour and you see an 825 cross and you want to take it? Just go down two time frame below that and you'll see the market structure correspond with that. You can ignore this bias indicator I put on here. And if you want to just take it in the time frame that you trade, as long as you have the respective stop, and our reward to risk ratio is three to one. So if this is the stop, 167, it means that our reward is 167 times three. It will be 167, you multiply this by 3. So for example then, let's say I want to find the target for this, and I'm at 1.33, and let's say I buy. It will be 1.33099, target would be above. I want to plus, open bracket, my target is 3 times my risk. My risk is 12, so 3 times 12. That's how I get the 36 that I was telling you about. Okay, so 3 times 12 multiplied by what the ATR is. Okay? See that? The ATR technically is 14 pips. I can just go 14. I can put the 0, 0. But let me just go 14, and I get it in pips. So multiply it by 14, close by my bracket, and that's what I get. 505 pips, that would be my target. It gives me a three to one reward ratio. Okay, so since we have done that then, now we are ready to move to the next level. What we have done thus far is to create for you the global trend following trading system. Let me go ahead now and complete the system by discussing with you the money management rule verbally and then I take it back over to the lecture room where we're going to put that on record. The default is that you will risk 0.01% if you are trading the one minute chart. The stop is 12 times the average true range. If you are trading the five minute chart, you risk 0.02%. Stop, 12 times the ATR. Trading the 15 minutes, your risk is 0.03. 30 minutes, 0.04. One hour, 0.05. Four hour, 0 0.06 and the daily 0 0.07, the weekly 0 0.08 and the monthly 0 0.09. That's the default. Now, most persons though who have a small account might not be able to use that default. 
to make it very easy, just take that default and multiply it by 10. Okay? So in that sense then, point for this one, you'd have risk 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. There are three groups of risk. One, conservative. The conservative is the default that I gave you. 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09. Then we have the medium risk. Multiply the conservative by 10. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. The aggressive high risk, you have multiplied by 100. So this will give me 1%. 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 9 yes, 9% 9 per trade. Remember that the monthly, weekly, and daily, these are long-term trade. Sometimes it takes two years to close. That I give you, the full risk management. You can either be conservative, moderate, or aggressive. Conservative, 0 0.01. Moderate, 0 0.1. Aggressive, 1%. I will go up like that. So then, now, let's look at how we could apply. I'm going to go back to my pivot window, which is strategy four. If I look at this trade, I notice that the market structure is bearish. The 200 on top of the 140, 140 on top of the 89, 89 on top of the 50, 50 on top of the 25, 25 on top of the 8. So this is a bearish market structure. I'm going to look to say, for this bearish market structure, I have an option. I could ignore the MACD multiple time frame and stick to this. For this, I realize that currently, if I'm not yet in a trade, I would have short when price break the support 3. So I could sell, I could set uh, a limit order right here to go short. Or if I'm watching it, when it closed below the support, I, I would have short this. And the stop again would be 12 times what the ATR is. But let's say I want to pick this up immediately when I have that trend change. That trend change would have occurred when the 140 cross the 200, so it would have occurred right here. And I would have shot here, irrespective of what it is, and then I go with my stop. So you'd have noticed that my stop here is right here, and I would have the same thing coming down. Market, what's the objective here? Market could reverse. There's nothing that is 100%. So market could reverse and take us out of that. And let's start, let's deal with the default here. If I'm trading this, it means I'm going to risk default. Say I'm conservative, so I'm going to be risking 0.06% of my free equity. Conservatively. Worst case scenario, market pullback, take me out, I lose 0.06. Not much. I can live with that. Okay? So that's where we are. The last, the last mat substantial or what I call material change would have been the change in trend. I would have shot the market here, and we are in a bearish market move. This is also confirmed by our bias indicator. All right, let me do one more or so for you. Let me look on the euro card. For this euro card, the, if we look to the left, you have seen the red, blue. So the cross would have happened already. We were operating in a bullish market structure, but we have a pullback into it. So the idea here is then, at what point we could get back in the trade? The truth is, we could get back in the trade right here, when all cross over here, and then we'd have moved by 12 times. In the current um, situation here, we, we had moved back in the trade on this bar. Okay, take us in, stop loss, 12 times what the ATR was, and we are here. And if we look at what is happening here now, while we are trending down, the market structure is still bullish. We haven't had the crossover of the 140 and the 200 yet, so we are still bullish on that particular pair, irrespective of what the other indicators giving us. Remember I said before though, 
if we are in the trade, our risk remain 12 times the ATR anytime we enter and we prefer the market to take us out. So for example, let's say you enter here and you say, wow, this is coming against me. Wow, I should get out. No, you set your risk, plan your trade and trade your plan. So leave it. What happened? Well, so we take us out. No problem. We lose 0.06%. I want to uh, maybe go and look at gold. Let me look at gold. For gold. We are in a gold trade. We are long. But maybe I could go back in time and look. What was the, after this pullback, what was the optimum point to enter? We could enter when the ADX crossed up. See here, right on this trigger, bam. We enter in the high of that. So we're going to enter in the high of the cross up. Okay, so you enter maybe five people above that. Boom. This bar take us in and we... What would have happened now? We'd have entered here, but we'd have be above break even with the stop. So you see that? We are bullish. We have a cross to the downside here. Um, maybe, maybe, we could be saying, well, could I get out here? No, it's just a pullback. In fact, looking on this, I might want to change this. Let me change this color. Because I want the downtrend to look um, a little bit more aggressive. So let me put this as magenta and aqua. Sorry, no, aqua and magenta. So down would be magenta up aqua. Let me take the yellow out of it. Bam, see that? This looks more dangerous. That's what it should be. I mean, you are in. Your money is not at risk. See? Good. So we use that. We haven't saved the template yet, so we are still good. All right. So you see how we could change that. What else that we could use? Okay. Let me do another one. Let me let me go back to Bitcoin then. Let me go back to Bitcoin. So here in Bitcoin, we see that the change. So when everybody talking, all the talking heads them run up all over the place. Let's reason. How could global traders make it here? Hey, we listen to them. We are on our 84 window. That's where we must be. We don't want to be on the daily. We, 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 we can't follow these big money. So, for example, most of you, you can't follow these big billion dollar fund. Just come a little bit closer to you. Come to the 84. We stop right here. Look, the trend chain. Don't let anybody tell you. To confirm it, the 140 must cross the 200. Bam. See that? Chain change. So see what is happening here? I want this 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 one look too big and aggressive. So let me take down the uh, let me take down the the size of that. Put it here. Okay, so look here. So this way. I want to just go back a little bit behind it so I could see. Let's double click on it and pull it. Now I'm gonna enter on the eye of this. Or maybe yes, I could just enter on the uh, on the tip of this factor. So I put the factor to the lowest ever. See, I come here, put the factor to the lowest. So the tip of the factor will give me an allowance between the high of the bar and the breakout point. So I'm going to use a blue here for breakout. So I put it right at the tip of the factor there. I want to change this. I'm going to put this as the blue. So, uh, but I want I don't want it so big. Okay. So I put this as blue. Okay. And bam. See what happened here? Look here. So I enter right here, okay? My stop will be 12 times the ATR. When we enter, we, we have discussed various trailing stop. We could trail by the 12. If we trail by the 12, then our stop loss will be right here as we speak. If we go by the tip of the factor, below the 25 is right here. Below the 25 right here. Tip of the 25 right here. Right here, bam, take we out. So we'll have to come again. If we use the 12, we are still in it. See that? But if you lose, if you use the tip of the factor, which is more conservative, and you get out, you would not reverse this. You stay put. When is the next opportunity for you to re-enter? The next opportunity to re-enter would have been right here. See that? When the ADX cross up, the high of this. See that? So when you enter on the high of that, boom, this take you in. We go sideways. Stop plus. I here. Or if you take the same 12, 8, 8, 8 here, it will be right here. Tip of the factor um, that close below the 25. So this one, stop. Stop here. Stop here. And we are still here. So that's it. How you could trade Bitcoin without listening to the talking ads.
we clear that. Now, what else do we have to do here? Well, maybe I could look at another one. Maybe let me look at light kind. Okay. Oh, no, let me look at the Ethereum, which is, boop, which is uh, pretty much of a common uh, one too. You'd have seen that Ethereum, we, we, we went long on this cross and then we pull back. Bam into the 89, whole support. If remember here, if we are using these tight stop loss, you must you must be willing to accept numerous stop out. The best to use is my default 12 times the average true range as trailing an hard stop. So assuming we have used that, this is what happened. We pull back, find support, shoot up again. Those who were not in the trade yet, we could possibly look to enter on the reversal of this. Okay, we should have technically be right here. And nicely, look at how Ethereum climbing up here. And today is the date of the record of this video, the 29th of January 2023. We do real stuff here. We can also look on the comparison with the support and resistance line. Here is the resistance line. Support. See what is happening here? Climbing nicely. Okay, what else I could use? Let me, um, well, I, li I like to use things that is moving. So let me look at Dodge coin that is, was pretty popular many years ago. You look what is happening, all the digital assets rising. See, here's the opportunity here to enter into that. We did enter here, stop loss default 12 times, and we're way down here. So now we're in move up market, we'll allow that to work out. Let me look at another one. Let me look at um, uh, Bitcoin Cash, okay? Boom. Boom, look what happened here. Wow, nice. Look on this. Look on this trade. Boom, get in here, up, up, pull back. No fear, up, pull back, stop loss here. See, that's it. We could look at support too, okay? That's how we utilize the global trend following. Let's look on, I wanna give you the trigger when you go over to the lecture room so you can have it on record now so the big question is does this appear to be a complete system can we make it to you trade a decision that beats our gut's feeling the simple answer is yes what else could i put on this and sign this system off let me reason with you there's something called trend lines that we normally plot and chart. And yes, we can even use the tip of the factor to plot trend lines. So for example, look at this one. The tip of this, this and this. I could draw this trend line, okay? And we need two points really to plot a trend. Um, three is the best. Uh, okay, so I plot that one. I could also look at plotting trend based on the the lower candle. So I could go here, look at this, boom, come here, this is an uptrend line. But while you sketch this uptrend line, someone could also come back, I wanna just um, double click it so I can delete it easier. Someone could also come and say, okay, the right trend line is between here and here. And they would have come and go like this, bam, see so there are some subjectivity in trend lines so this is what i like to do i like to just keep a methodology to keep to plot trend lines but i don't like to plot it myself so there are indicators now called automatic trend lines i want to do one i want to use one that give me a channel it give me a down trend up trend so i can know when i break out of the channel that's the last thing I need to put on this. And this is the full system. So let me go back to my indicator. If you look how we reason through why we do each of these things, okay? Um, um, th there's something else I could put on for you. 
I, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. Um, yeah, let me go back. I could put on what I deem to be an ATR trailing stop using the same concept of the 20 period ATR 20 period and use the multiplier as 12. I could trail by the daily, monthly, weekly or any time frame but I want it to be the current since the methodology is 12 times the current. I want it to be an all and I'm, I'm okay with using this setting um, and therefore I'm going to put this on. If you look this and a little bit a little bit a little bit half from our current here if you look this would have been where the stop so you could look immediately and see where 12 would take you so for you to put in that stop especially if you take the trade before you can just put your mouse right here and you'll see ATR ups of 110.55 okay um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this let me go back to to Bitcoin and see where that trailing will be telling me. You'd have noticed, see the trailing here? So you see when we enter, this is how the trailing would have, would have um, considered. You know what, I'm, I might want to change this color because I don't want it to interfere with my lines. So maybe I want to use, um, let me go ahead and use this. Same, aqua but let me put this as a dotted and i don't want my chart to look too confusing since it says most of you is big uh beginners so you see look a little lighter here so yeah so that's what i'm going to use so you could see here that on this i can see exactly where my 12 is immediately i can see it okay now so i breach it a bit because i said that is my last um uh so let me go back to put on what I call my trend lines. I'm not, I'm not gonna add any more to it after this. As yes, I will say that this is more than a complete system, a strategy that you just need to uh, dive into it. I want to add I want to put on all these dangles on it. I want a channel line too. So I said, I don't want comment. So I'm going to take off comment, okay? Um, this gives me trend line, horizontal, channel, and also the take line to show me when I have the breakout. I already have the color red and blue. I'm okay with that. I put it on all time frame, okay? And I go bam, boom. See what happened here? Don't worry. We are now ready for business. Let me go back. Let me go to a one hour so you could see it a little bit clearer. And let me also take this a little bit down so I have more room to play with. Okay, good. Look at this now. So let's go back in time. Here is a 825 cross. We take it. When we take this, we notice that we are now in an uptrend. When we are here, we know that there's a potential resistance on the top of the channel. But as long as price stay above the 8 EMA, we are still good. So look at this now. Look at the price. Move above the 8 EMA right up, up, up until we are now approaching the channel. The top of this channel was also another breakout to the upward arrow. And you get a trigger from here. 23,600. Boom. And we're gone. This is the end. This is a complete system. I don't need to put on fair retracement because in my support resistance, I already incorporate the retracement. Now, so here I can show you a few things. These aqua lines are support lines according to the channel. Okay. Um, let me use Ethereum again. So you could see what is happening here. So yeah, you see we break above this, this channel here. Boom. See that? Break above the channel. It's an aggressive move here, my friend. Support coming in here. Okay. You could see a clear green here. This is powerful. So this is an up channel. 
this was a down channel see the trigger point here with this red horizontal line is the trigger point we break above it bam this leads me to the end of this construction of what we now call the global i want to want to name it so I right click go save template you will have this template we call it the global trend following trading system in bracket we say G T F T S we don't need bam that's it so we have now completed the system ask me is there anything else I want to put on it? No. Is there anything I need to tra change? No. Should I change the parameters? No. In the long run, there is nothing that you do that will change the strategy materially. Psychology now play a major role. We should allow the trade to work itself out. You see profit? Leave it. Let it run. All that will happen, our risk is always 12 ATR. That's our one hour risk. Worst case scenario, we enter a trade, we lose all one hour. If it run by 50% in our direction, we reduce the risk from one hour to 0.5 hour. If it run up just by 12 ATR, we'd have moved to break even. So apart from spread and commission, we would technically remove the normal risk. If it, start to con if it continues in our direction, we start to lock in profit and we call it secured and realized profit will allow the market to take us out okay so now that i have done that what i want to do now i want to go back to our original um lecture room and here you have it i'm gonna i'm gonna give you the three risk management rule. Based on what we have discussed. So here I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it global. Trend following. Trading system rules. Okay. I just black that for emphasis. First, I'm going to look at buy signal. So a buy signal, and this I mean, when do I enter long, okay? So a buy signal a buy signal occurs when one the moving averages are in a bullish market structure and we have discussed that already where we see all this suck into each other Two, the MACD is above the zero line. Or positive. Three.
the ADX is above 20 for the RSI as the relative strength index is is at 50 or greater than 50. The stochastic 5, I just put it for a shot, S T O C H is at 50 or greater than 50. And this would give me the entry. I might want us to add here and the positive DMI, okay, is above negative DMI. So, clarification. When this happens, you enter a trade. I'm not going to restrict you, okay? You'll mark it out or, or um, limit out. You enter a trade, risking 0.01%, okay? Or 0.1%. I want to give it a rule for no let me not do that risk 0.01 percent to nine percent of free equity with a trailing stop loss equal to 12 ATR and we're using 20 periods that write like this. Okay, so I, I have a special reason why I put this. I already tell you that for system one, you risk 0.01%, system two, go up. So you're going to do it in order. So I'm, I don't have to labor too much here as we will be doing some others, but that's what you do from the, from the point zero 0.01 is from the one minute, point zero 0.02, the five minutes, and likewise. I want to now look at the cell. Okay. And I'm not so sure if I'll be able to copy and no, let me, let me just do it from scratch. Okay. So, let me use red for this. No insult. Okay, so A, oh, you're not changing. Okay. I'm so sure I'm not getting this off. Let's try it again. Ah, right, so this would have been for our buy setup. Um, maybe I should use a different screen for sell. Okay. Uh, or maybe not. No, let's put it in the same screen. This is 
you have to use the same color. Okay, so let me look at cell signal. We say a cell signal occurs when I will put a colon. Let's go with the one. The moving average. are uh, in a bearish market structure. Okay, two. If I have any typo here, forgive me as we're not pre-reading much, we're just typing straight on screen. Uh, two, the MACD is below zero or negative. Three, the ADX is above 20. Remember, the ADX doesn't give you a trend direction. It is the negative DMI now that rises above the positive DMI. So we have negative DMI and uh, let me change this here a bit. Let's go with okay. Uh, oops, what did I do? Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Let me take out. Oh, I'm not able to back. Okay, so here I want to do a correction. Here, there was a little um gap here. We said ADX above 20. And the ne positive DMI above negative. Okay, so let me let me train that. And positive DMI above negative. The MI. Okay. So maybe I could cross this. Have it the same as that. And you'll also have it in a manual that I'm going to give. So that's not too much of a problem. Okay. So, so say ADX above 50. So we can um, put this now. And Negative DMI above positive DMI. Okay, four. The RSI below fifty. Five. This sarcastic is below fifty. All right. So, and it's the same risk management we are talking about. We will have a risk. So I put that if anyway. A risk module equal to uh, let me call it risk module. Let's stick to the format so we don't confuse it. Okay. When this occur, you enter a short position. Risking between 0.01 percent of free equity zero point zero one 
Zero point zero one percent to nine percent of free equity with a trailing stop equal to twelve ATR. And we are using pure twenty. Now I want to just say this. Um a lot of persons will be saying, Hey Dr. Brown, you are irresponsible to tell a person to risk nine percent of the account. All right, let me let me do this. Many system developer after creating a system say that your money management rule depends on your risk appetite. Okay? I believe that that is an incomplete system. Um, the truth is that majority of persons who aspire to become independent in this life would not have the capital to start an account with a hundred thousand, etc. And yes, you have brokers that will allow them to start with any amount of money and give them up to 500% leverage. That's okay for me. That's a risk. It's just like you go to the bar on Saturday night and you drink and your bill come up to $2,000. So that's not too much of an issue. What I'm saying to you is that for those persons who fall in that bracket, you can risk up to 9%, but you must, have not, you must not have more than one trade because the truth is this. Um, I believe a 9% a portfolio risk is okay. As a matter of fact, even a 25% portfolio risk could be okay. Up to 30% portfolio risk could be okay. So let's say you have three instruments, three 927. I'm okay with that. So um, in truth and in fact, um, based on the soundness of the system, no guarantee anyway, and based on our target to say 55% win ratio with aiming for three to one rewards where we are aiming to have a profit factor of say two i believe the system is capable of doing that and hence nine percent is not too much of a big move there are persons who enter more than nine percent without knowing so what we are saying here we are giving you a complete system or we have given to you now a complete system that leaves nothing to the imagination This is going to lead us to the end of this session. I believe it should be informative. I believe it should also be complex. I believe it is worthwhile to dive into it. And I know that we also um, will be given an opportunity to many persons around the world with this system. Because in truth, in fact, we decide to give you this system free so that you can have an idea of what proprietary trading is. Proprietary trading is when you take on your, unto yourself the responsibility to trade your own capital. In this sense, you would not have any client no customer and for guidance here under no condition should you accept money from any individual to trade on their behalf you don't have a license to do that and if you have a license to do that i don't recommend it now i don't want you to con i don't want you to confuse proprietary trading with what you see now around the internet there are many persons who advertise prop firm where they give you an evaluation to see if you can pass it on a demo account and if you pass it you get a live account most of the time 98 percent lose if you can trade and if you have a system that can trade and you start to make money on your account then you can leverage your skill by yes utilizing those prop firms but i recommend for you to focus on yours Focus on your $100. Focus on your $50. Focus and say, okay, I want to put aside $100 each month to add to my business. This is a business. And then I sometimes don't recommend for you to go 
and utilize these prop firms. I will have other courses that show you how to do it, but not just that, we will find a way to set the parameters to ensure that you are not abused. But for now, let's keep it simple. Build your own business. Build your own proprietary trading firm. Start from now. Going forward, we'll be using this system. And we also will be using this account, maybe for 180 days, depending on when the broker. That's 180 days or so in the next six months. We'll continue to use it to do daily commentaries, weekly commentaries, intraday commentaries in the form of lecture and put in the portal. We'll also add content. We'll also show you how to open a demo account to practice it. And yes, as a lot of you um, may know this, that we also have many algorithmic trading software that automatically trade for us. Instead of allowing human to do that, that is built based on our methodology. We have not yet made any decision, and I don't think we will for now, in sending those systems to the market, as we believe that giving you a software without training you is worthless. So our aim is to develop training program, and if it includes the software, then the fee will be pretty much heavy, Many persons will not be able to pay it, and then we create these programs that is more meaningful to you where you are now, and so you can start your manual trading, and later on, you can add some algorithm to it. So, until my next session, this is Dr. Brown saying happy trading.